Welcome. Here we are on Ash Wednesday. Normally at this time we would have the church with a number of people here. We would be prepared to impose ashes and to begin a time of Lent, but it's certainly a time of repentance. And maybe we need to start with just remembering that Lent is a season of 40 days. It doesn't count Sundays. It begins on Ash Wednesday and ends on Holy Saturday. A Lent comes from the Anglo-Saxon word Lenten, which means spring. The season is a preparation for celebrating Easter. Historically, Lent began as a period of fasting in preparation for baptism by converts, who then became a time for penance by all Christians. The first Sunday describes Jesus' temptation by Satan. The sixth Sunday, Passion Sunday, is Christ's triumphal entrance into Jerusalem. Because Sundays are always little Easter's, the penitential spirit of Lent should be tempered with joyful expectation for the res resurrection. <clears throat> the great three days, sometimes called the Tritium or Pasch, from sunset Holy Thursday until sunset Easter Day, are the climax of Lent and of the whole Christian year and a bridge into the Easter season. So here we are in an interesting time. Uh, many of us have already <coughs> begun to practice some form of fasting as we've gone through COVID-19, the pandemic, and social distancing. And uh, more recently than that, we've learned how to fast from water and electricity and warmth. And maybe for the first time for some of us, we can appreciate the situation in which the disciples really lived. When it was cold, they were really cold. Uh, when it was hot, they were really hot. When they were hungry, they were really, really hungry. And so as we begin our time together today, I just understand that we wish we were together uh, we wish we could impose ashes. We have them right here. We have some ashes, palm ashes that have been burnt. And we wish that we could have found a safe way to do it, even though some have described using Q-tips. Uh, the, the requirement, unlike communion, which we can put up the plexiglass shield and we can hand to you through that, the requirement of Lent or, or of Ash Wednesday is really a hands-on event. And even just sprinkling ashes would not be appropriate under these circumstances in my estimation and so uh, we're erring on the side of caution even though with the weather the way it is the likelihood is good we wouldn't have had many show up anyway as we begin this time together the grace of the lord christ be with you and if you were here you'd say and also with you bless the lord who forgives all our sins because god's mercy endures forever with me here tonight is J.T. LaRue, our associate pastor, James Taylor, and he's going to read for us now from Joel. Hear these words from Joel. Blow a trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. Surely it is near. A day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, as the dawn is spread over the mountains. So there is a great and mighty people. There has never been anything like it, nor will there be again after it to the years of many generations. Yet even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart and with fasting, weeping, and mourning, and rend your heart and not your garments. Now return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger, abounding in loving kindness and relenting of evil who knows whether he will who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him even a grain offering and a libation for the Lord your God blow a trumpet in Zion consecrate a fast proclaim a solemn assembly gather the people sanctify the congregation assemble the elders Gather the children and the nursing infants. Let the bridegroom come out of his room and the bride of her bridal chamber. Let the priest, let the priest, the Lord's ministers, weep between the porch and the altar. And let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord, and do not make thine inheritance a reproach, a byword among the nations. Why should they among the people say, Where is their God? And the reading from 2 Corinthians, 
we entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake we made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on the day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are planning. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, and holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and in dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown yet are well known, as dying, see, we are alive, as punished yet not killed, as sorrowful yet not always rejo yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing everything. Reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, hear these words. Beware of practicing your righteousness before men to be noticed by them. Otherwise you have no reward with your Father who is in heaven. When therefore you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may be honored by men. Truly, I say to you, they have their reward in full. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, that your alms may be in secret, and your Father, who sees in secret, will repay you. And when you pray, are, you are not to be as the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on the street corners in order to be seen by men. Truly I say to you, they have their reward in full. But you, when you pray, go into your inner room, and when you have shut your door, pray to your Father, who is in secret, and your Father, who sees in secret, will repay you. And whenever you fast, do not put on a gloomy face, as the hypocrites do, for they neglect their appearance in order to be seen fasting by men. Truly I say to you, they have their reward in full. But you, when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, so that you may not be seen fasting by men, but by your Father, who is in secret, and your Father, who sees in secret, will repay you. So you hear the words from the Gospel of Matthew, and here we are at a time of really pretty significant suffering. I know here at the church, the power's been off and on. We had a pipe burst, and we're for more fortunate than many. We, it was outside, and so we're in good shape. We'll just have to get it fixed before we could use the facilities. Many that I know of have had her pipes burst at home, and they're learning to deal with cold weather that we don't normally have to deal with in this area. Now, let me just tell you, 14 degrees is cold. Uh, things, weird, wonky things will happen that we aren't used to happening here in the mid-20s, which is about as cold as we usually see it again. And I know, in driving around, I'm aware of the suffering. I was telling JT, as I uh, went out to get five gallons of gas for our generator, I had to drive all around because most of the gas stations, some of them had gas but no power. A few had power but no gas. And where there was both, the lines went for blocks. I already had noticed at Kroger that it was just like a war zone, that people were in there, it was, it was unbelievably crowded. And I really couldn't relate to why, because I realized that I really do live a life of being privileged. Uh, our life didn't change much, really, until last night. Our power was on the whole time. The heat was running, our place was going, the TV was working, the internet worked. Uh, we were good to go, and then about 10.50 last night, we found out what it's like when the power went off. But then it came back on this morning. 
As I went out and I saw long lines, a block or block and a half long, uh, long lines of people waiting to get into Popeyes or to get into uh, McDonald's or if they're open or to get into Whataburger, whichever ones were open, I began to realize the real need there is that people weren't prepared. And I know it's easy for us to jump on the, the bandwagon of saying ERCOT should have been prepared, but the news media has been telling us about this as well. This one didn't happen suddenly. We've been knowing about it for days. And I know we tend to say, well, it's overhyped up and dreamed up. And maybe that relates back to this Matthew passage about when you blow a trumpet and you give alms where everybody can see it. Uh, maybe we've just uh, become people that believe everybody cries wolf. But I know that really, for the most of us, many of us are blessed. I was talking to one of our church members a few minutes ago, and she waited over an hour to get gas only having 25 miles left when she got into the line and having to wait an hour. So I think uh, we have begun to realize, what do you think? Have you found it to be a little bit uh, humbling that we, uh, what was it you said you had survivor skills, right? I did, uh, and I still kind of have that because my electric is still on and I have heat and I still have a little bit of water. Uh, but like you, when I went to Kroger, it hit me a little harder realizing that I couldn't buy milk and I just take for take that for advantage I can't get something that I, I want and need so yeah for my first awareness was that after the Rita Katrina evacuation and uh, I came home because the other pastor was out of town and I knew we'd need to have church and uh, when I got home they canceled the event except that everything was closed and I couldn't even buy a coke anywhere because everything was closed so the things that we find important, there's other people that would just like to have some rice or some beans, and here right. I am worried about soda water, or JT's worried about milk. <laughs> you know, we, we don't uh, really get it. And then Ash Wednesday has always been kind of an interesting thing for me. Growing up as a Methodist, and I know JT had experiences in some other denominations for his Methodist, uh, we didn't really do it uh, until I moved back to, uh, to the Houston area, and then so it would have been 1987, 88, something like that. No, before that, maybe 83. And they were imposing ashes. And I thought, well, that's something Catholics do. We don't really do that. And of course, I grew up in a, in a Roman Catholic neighborhood. We were the only Protestants there. So I was well aware of the customs. Uh, and then as we began to take on this notion that it was about sackcloth and ashes and repentance and, and turning back to God or, and to realize that all of us need to turn back to God. It's, it's like we haven't, we haven't really been there all the time. We haven't been as faithful as we want to be. We're, we're, uh, we're just as much as sinners as anybody. And, uh, and I'm re reflecting about my friend John Stoper, who now is a pastor in Beaumont, uh, one time was uh, ministering to some homeless folk. Uh, they were around, gathered around to probably a 55-gallon drum of fire in it or something under a bridge, and playing the guitar and singing some songs. And, and John was sharing with them what it was like to be found. And one of the homeless guys looked at him and said, Preacher, what worries me about you is you don't think you're lost. And I think that's what this is about. This whole six weeks of, of Lent uh, is about realizing we're lost. We really are lost. And uh, maybe, you know, uh, it, this, this notion of no power and no water, maybe that takes us away from wondering about what the stock market's going to do and and whether we have enough money for retirement or whether we make enough money, maybe we're now in a position of just wishing we had enough of what we need. And I really think that's what we also need to do as we turn to God, is I think we need to look back at God and say, you know, you've been there all the time. We're the ones that turn away, not you. You've never left us. So tonight as we gather, realize that we wish you were here and we wish we could do the ashes uh, we just can't. Now, both of us are pretty safe. We both had both shots. And so uh, we're almost six feet apart. But, but we're about as six feet apart as they are in the newscasters. But uh, we also are pretty safe in that regard. <coughs> Plus the fact neither one of us have been around anybody. But uh, I think uh, as we turn our lives now to a few moments of repentance and listening and patience, just understand that this is a solemn time. We've got the lights mostly out here in the sanctuary. Uh, a lot of the fancy stuff is kind of in the background. We have the scriptures, which is of course what we're centered around. We have the ashes, which are symbolic today. 
Uh, there, there's just a, a little bowl with palm branch ashes in it. And I think we just need to observe a time to move into Lent. Uh, the color for Lent is purple. Uh, the, the opportunity for Lent is to repent and believe the gospel. Uh, one of my seminary professors, his name is Mark Stomp, of adapted, he's one of the ones that wrote some of the book of worship and he adapted to some of the things that we normally say you know often we say here you know from ashes you came and from uh, from dust you came and from dust to dust you must return uh, here's his reminder for us in uh, 2021 Ash Wednesday is ice from water you came and to water you will return I'm not sure that that's really appropriate, but it's funny. So we'll, we'll put it in there anyway. Hear these words, friends. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the early Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection. And it became the custom of the church that before the Easter celebration, there should be a 40-day season of spiritual preparation. During this season, converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when persons who had committed serious sins and had been separated by separated from the community of faith were reconciled by penitence and forgiveness and then restored to participation in the life of the church. In this way, the whole congregation was reminded of the mercy and forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel of Jesus Christ and the need we all have to renew our faith. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the church, observe a holy Lent by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word to make a right beginning of repentance and as a mark of our moral nature. Let us now take a few moments to kneel or bow before our Creator and Redeemer. We'll spend a few moments in silence. Amen. These are the ashes. Almighty God, you created us out of dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be to us a sign of our mortality and penitence so that we may remember that only by your gracious gift are we given everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And had we had ashes, we'd be singing and we would say, Repent and believe the gospel. Repent and believe the gospel. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you will return. May the almighty and merciful God who desires not the death of a sinner, but that, the turn, but that we turn from wickedness and live, accept your repentance, forgive our sins, and restore us all by the Holy Spirit to newness of life. Amen. I don't know who you are or where you are right now as you watch this, but whoever you're with, take this opportunity to offer signs of peace and reconciliation to each other. JT, the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you, Brian. Well, the saddest thing is we don't get to sing There is a Balm in Gilead. So we'll have to sing it on Sunday. Maybe every Sunday, because it's such a wonderful song. There is a balm in Gilead. I love the part in there where it says, "If you can't, if you can't pray like Peter, you can't preach like Paul." Then tell the love of Jesus who came to save us. Friends, go in peace to celebrate a wonderful and incredible and repentance and repentant penitent time during this time of Lent. In Jesus' name, you are forgiven. Amen.